Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Lowen. I'm a paleontologist at the University of Utah and the Natural History Museum of Utah. Uh, my name is Joseph Sertich. I am a researcher with the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in Panama, which is where I'm sitting right now. Uh, and I am also a affiliate with Colorado State University in the Department of Geosciences. So we're totally excited to announce a new species of horned dinosaur. Lokiceratops rangiformes is a completely new dinosaur and an amazing dinosaur that tells us a lot about how this group of dinosaurs evolved. The new research is focused on a new type of horned dinosaur. Uh, this one is really unique in the horns on the, the back of its frill and the, the size. It's one of the largest of this type of horned dinosaur called a centrosaurine. Um, but what's really neat about this research is it really blew the doors open on diversity. Um, and so we've been studying diversity across what we call Laramidia for more than 20 years now, our team. And this was really surprising because it's a, a fourth centrosaurine from the same rock layer, uh, and it's a fifth horned dinosaur from the same rock layer overall. So that means there's super high diversity. Um, but what's really neat is that it's diversity we haven't seen elsewhere in Laramidia, and these types of dinosaurs uh, don't have a huge range, so they're only known from this one small region in Laramidia. One of the things that shocked us about finding Loki ceratops, we expected it to be a member of the three species that we already knew occurred at the same time in that formation in the late Cretaceous of Montana. But what was amazing is we found that the horns on the edge of the frill at the back of the skull were completely different from those other dinosaurs, which shows us that there are four of the same group of dinosaurs living at the same time in the same place. And it really starts to tell us that these animals are more diverse than we thought and got us to thinking about what kinds of evolution are driving these patterns. And so we started looking at the horns on the edge of the head shield at the back of the head and started to realize very close relationships with things like deer and caribou and elk and moose. These dinosaurs are using these ornaments on the back of their head and these ornaments are driving them in different directions evolutionarily because of sexual preferences. So as paleontologists, we think we know everything. Although at the same time, we know we really know nothing. But it's really cool when you expect something to be one thing and it turns out to be another. So the cool thing is there's really way more diversity than we ever imagined and new species of dinosaurs are being found all the time. So when I started as a paleontologist, I, I tended to think, you know, all the cool stuff has already been found. There really are new lessons to be learned every day and new specimens to be uncovered. It changes the way we think about evolution, at least of these horned dinosaurs on Laramidia between about 80 million and 72 million years ago. And it shows that they're rapidly diversifying. They don't have huge ranges. They're, they're diversifying in a small home range. Um, and it reflects what we see in a lot of modern animals, especially birds. One of the cool things about this paper is it's the outgroup of more than 30 years of studying the family tree of horned dinosaurs. So we present for the first time one of the most inclusive and thorough in-depth family trees of the Ceratopsian dinosaurs. So we're really excited about learning more and more about the relationships between things like Triceratops, Centrosaurus, and our new dinosaur, Loki Ceratops. That there's still a lot that we don't know about dinosaur evolution and evolution in the Cretaceous. Um, this is a time period that's really important because it's the the appearance of our modern world. A lot of the modern players like uh, flowering plants, uh, birds, snakes, uh, all these animals that we have around us today get their start at this time. And we're just scratching the surface on understanding what that emerging world operated like. Another key point, I think, is that it's such a cool dinosaur. And so if you're into dinosaurs and you love 
uh, bizarre headgear on dinosaurs. This is probably the craziest, coolest horned dinosaur to come along in a really long time. One of the things I love about PeerJ, as a scientist, as I'm reading a scientific paper, I want to be able to see the actual citation in references. And the cool thing about PeerJ is not only can I see the reference, I can also click on it immediately and be taken directly to that paper. The fact that we can actually see citations in PeerJ and the fact that PeerJ publishes unlimited color figures is one of the reasons, besides the fact that PeerJ is open access, that I choose PeerJ.